What is poppin' people? Welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to catch 10 times more fish in any conditions, any time of year. You throw these baits, you throw the way that I'm talking about, and you guys will catch a lot more fish. Whether you're fishing ponds, whether you're fishing out of the boat at some lakes, whether you're fishing rivers, whether you're kayak fishing some smaller places, neighborhood ponds, big private farm ponds, wherever you're at, all these techniques are gonna to work. Today, I'm actually out on the beautiful Ogeechee River, and we're gonna be trying to catch some fish on the ways that I'm talking about. So, we're gonna go ahead and hop into this, jump right into it. We're gonna be talking about some of the baits, why we're gonna be throwing these, what baits to switch over to if they're not biting a certain bait, and we're gonna hop right into it. So first thing that we're gonna talk about today is first, before we even get into the bait, we got a few baits we're talking about. We're gonna talk about the rod and reel setup. There's one rod and reel in particular that I like just because it's one of the most versatile combos. And what I like is seven foot to seven foot three, medium heavy. You can throw just about anything on it from a Texas rig all the way to a chatter bait, all the way to a spinner bait, all the way to even a crank bait if you're wanting to do that, like a smaller one, rattle trap, whatever you wanna throw. So around a seven foot to seven three, medium heavy for your rod. As in the reel, guys, I keep it very basic, like a seven three to one, seven one to one gear ratio reel. Um, all these people talk about the different gear ratios, but once you've been fishing for a while, you know, you can adjust it with your hand and however you're moving. But the base that we're throwing today, you're not even gonna have to worry about that. Um, pound tests, you're gonna want 15 to 17 pound because you're gonna go out there, you're gonna use your big bass energy, and you're gonna catch those launches. So let's go ahead and talk about the rig that we're gonna be throwing. So this is one of the most basic rigs out there, and this is actually a basic Texas rig. I know you guys have probably heard about it and you guys are probably saying, man, I already know about the Texas rig. I'm gonna click off this video, but don't do that yet. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell right next to it. Also, hit the like button if you guys wanna see some more tip videos. So let's go ahead and hop into this. So basic Texas rig, let's go ahead and take this bait right off of here because that's irrelevant for this part. So in my hand, I got a 4 aught EWG hook. These are actually by six cents. Any of the stuff that I'm talking about today, if you want a discount on, I will pop the code up on the screen and I'll drop the links down below. Um, but this is a 4 aught EWG hook. These hooks are sharp as can be. Um, as for the weight, I'm using a simple 1 fourth ounce, just standard bullet weight. This is a lead weight. Keep it basic, keep it simple. Where's the packaging? I have it somewhere right here. Just simple and basic. Out here on the river, I don't wanna use tungsten. I use just basic lead weights just because I break off a lot. Um, or if you catch like a mud fish or something, that's gonna snap you off. So that is the basic rig right there. If you guys are wondering about the knot, I tie a uni knot. Um, I know a lot of people out there tie a polymer knot, but I love the uni. I've been tying it for years. I haven't had any problems with it. And it's overall my favorite knot. So that is the rig that we're gonna be using. Now let's talk about the baits that we're gonna be throwing on. I have three specific baits in my hands today that we're gonna be talking about. One is called the prawn. This is a crawl style bait. It's more of a beaver style. It's gonna be different than the stroker crawl that I have right here. Comparing these two baits, let's whip them out of the package. So this right here is actually the prawn by six cents. In the last like probably six videos I've uploaded, I've absolutely killed the fish on it. Um, and this is like a beaver style bait. It's a smaller beaver. And as you guys can tell, you pull these apart right here and it's just got a tiny bit of motion at the end. On the other hand, we got a stroker crawl right here. When you get them out of the package, you're gonna pop them off like that so those legs are free. As you guys can tell by this one, it's got those tails at the end that are gonna be kicking the whole time. That's gonna put off a lot more vibration. A little more subtle, a lot more vibration. So if those fish are a little bit more finicky like today, last night we actually had a cold front. It went from 80 degrees all the way to a high of 50 today, 30 degree drop. Okay, I'm gonna wanna use something more like this that's a little bit more subtle that those fish are gonna bite because they're gonna be slower today. Pressure, I mean, it was low last night and now it's just skyrocketed. So those fish are gonna be a little slower. I'm gonna go with the prawn. Fish are a little bit more active. If you're fishing more dirty water, you're gonna wanna go with the stroker crawl, okay? That's gonna put off a little bit more vibration. And you'll get a ton of bites on that. But if you don't get bites on a crawl that has you know a lot of motion, you wanna switch over to something like this that's a little more subtle, the fish will bite it. Now let's talk about if they're not biting either one of these baits, because I've seen it like this, where these fish just don't want to eat a crawl. You know, they really want a worm better. So that's when I'll switch over to, this is actually the clout. This is a stick bait right here. 
And by the way, this color right here is called dark water bug. This is perfect. It's, it describes itself as perfect for dirty water. On one side, it's got a purplish color with some blue flakes. And on the other side, it's black and blue. It's split half and half. This is going to be amazing for a bunch of the ponds that you guys are fishing if you're um, doing that. Um, because the majority of the ponds out there have dirty water. Therefore, you're going to want to use like a black and blue June bug and a dark color like this. So if you're not getting bites on the crawls, a great option to switch over to is a Senko right here. You're gonna throw it the same way. So let's go ahead and actually rig this up on the rod. Let's use the Senko as an example. Fish aren't biting today, it's super tough. So this is what you're gonna to wanna to do. You got your EWG hook, you got your stick bait. You're gonna line the stick bait, boom, right there. You're gonna break it through. You're gonna push the bait all the way up on the eyelid of the hook, just like that. And we're going to want to rig this weedless, okay? So right here, you're going to lay your Senko on top of the hook. Where the end of the hook is right there, that's exactly where you're going to want to penetrate it. So, boom, we're going to go in right there. And I'm going to keep it right below the plastic. And then I'm going to pull the front end and bury that front of the hook. And look at this. This is perfect. Right there. Look at that. This is weedless as it gets right there and you're not gonna have any problems going through grass if that's what you're fishing. So this bait right here is amazing, but this is only one part of the process. We're gonna have to figure out how the fish want it today, whether it's us dragging it, whether it's us popping it, whether it's us throwing this thing weightless because there's a lot of grass, and I know a lot of you guys are fishing ponds, you might wanna, sit, you might wanna throw this weightless just because there's so much grass. Um, but we're gonna be throwing this around some cover, around some of these reeds right here, and uh, you know we're gonna want a weight on there today. But that is the beautiful rig that we're gonna be using. Like I said, tough conditions today, cold front last night, I'm gonna go to a worm. You know, sometimes they'll eat the crawl, but if they're not eating it, you know, we've had a few bites on it today, we're gonna switch to a worm for a more subtle approach. Now let's see how we're gonna throw it. I think so. We were getting bites though, every once in a while. Yeah. There he is. You got him? Get him, boy. Yeah, Bradley. Oh yeah. Right. Two seconds on the on worm. The Senko. He's on the Senko though. Yes, sir. So Bradley was throwing the Senko. He's throwing the clout. Caught him a little old bass. Nothing big. Right there on the grass though. As you guys can tell, he's tucked up on it, wasn't he? Tucked right up on it. Hit it just like it's missed. Right there. Right there, guys. He's in that little cubby hole. Little things like that you want to pick up on. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. Dude, he's running. Oh my gosh, it's a good one. Oh, oh, Bradley. Yes. Boys, we got us a good one today, man. We got us a good one right here. And we are getting one step closer. Me and Bradley have been talking and we were going back in the slough for probably two miles already. And it's high tide. We're gonna see if we can find them stacked up. We haven't had a bite this whole way. And then boom, just knocked a good one right there. That is a beautiful Ogeechee River bass, fat and healthy. We're gonna keep on fishing. I hooked him. By the time I hooked him, he's already under my boat. That's how strong these fish are out here. That is awesome. Let's Since keep we going. talked about the rig that we're gonna be using. Now I'm gonna talk about a few different ways that you guys can catch more fish on it. This is the important part um, to where it's gonna make you catch, I promise you, a lot more fish if you're using these tips I'm in today's video so if you look around um there's a bunch of different things you see these little reeds and stuff all around this weird looking grass you guys probably don't see that much we're actually in some brackish water right now um we also have some lay downs right here in this corner and uh you know bass what they like to do is they hang up on all that stuff whether it's wood whether it's rock whether it's grass they like to have their back in all that okay so seeing that lay down right there that fish is going to be right up on that thing so whether if you guys are fishing bank spots especially if you guys see anything like that, if you see laydowns, whatever it is, you need to be flipping an old Texas rig in there, okay? Here, this is current. As you guys can tell, I have my weight free. If you guys are flipping in some heavy cover, I would suggest putting a bobber stop on top of this so your weight is pegged, okay? Here, if you're fishing tidal water, if you're fishing where there's a lot of current, I like to use no peg because it's gonna have a lot more motion. It's gonna look a lot more natural to that bass. So, all right, so we're pulling up in this pocket. You know, we got some grass, got some laydowns, and I wanna cast at that tree. You know, I wanna see if there's a fish on that tree. So I'm gonna get this Texas rig, and give it a little cast right up on that tree, let up on my line out, make sure you're on the bottom. There's gonna be one style that if the fish are super tough, this is what I do all the time. So I just let it sit for a minute. Once I cast out there, I'll reel up my slack, 
And I'm gonna slowly drag that thing over those limbs right there. Very slow, okay? Reel up your slack, slowly drag that thing. And if those fish are really finicky, sometimes that's how they're gonna want it. But then there's gonna be some days that you're gonna cast this bait up on there. Boom, just like that, right up in that tree. And you're just gonna wanna click it and not even move that thing. That's called dead sticking. You know, that is the worst case. If the fish are like, just totally shut off, you can't get a bite, you need to try dead sticking, okay? And then there's gonna be those days where the fish are a little bit more active, you're covering some water, and you're gonna pitch up in that tree, if you're throwing the crawl especially, you're gonna wanna kinda pop it. You know, you're gonna wanna kinda hop it. And those fish are gonna want it better that day. You know, it's just gonna depend. You're gonna have to experiment with dead sticking it, dragging the bait, popping the bait, but make sure you're up on that cover. That's very important because those bass are gonna suck up to that stuff. One very important thing is in a sunny day. That's when those fish are really gonna get up on that. If you have a lot of clouds in the sky, sometimes those fish are gonna be roaming a lot more. Um, but when that sun gets up, those fish are gonna wanna get out of that and they're gonna get push up in those lay downs and a bunch of that cover. So I'm gonna flip this little Sanko up on all of this stuff along the bank and we're gonna also hit some of this grass back in here and we're gonna see if we catch some fish i'm gonna be using some of the techniques that i just talked about you know whether it's slow dragging it whether it's popping it but today with that cold front i think it's gonna be a lot slower and we're gonna have to work it very very slow um we're gonna try that crawl a little bit um, if we can't get them on that we're gonna result over to the senko but i've seen so many comments of people saying man noah there he is took my senko gone bro gone bro look at that gone all right here's a great example right here you guys ready when that happens i didn't get a hook in him he just took it okay i'm gonna switch up to this crawl because it's a different presentation he noticed that worm okay now we're gonna switch right over to this we're gonna pitch in there and we're gonna see if he'll eat it rig it the same way yeah rig it the same way right up on there we're gonna put Pull these tails off there we go that's perfect yeah. and this is important you want to get back in there really quick he was right under that tree guys right on that cover Let's see if we'll eat this thing but you saw how slow i was working that worm guys it's important but he had it he peeled it right off but usually when that happens you can get back in there and catch him This could be another one of those situations where they just don't want this crawl. You know, they want something a little more slower, like a worm. And, uh, you know, I wanted to put on the crawl because he just saw the worm, you know, maybe switching it up, throwing something a little bit different in there might trigger that fish to bite. But he just did not have it all the way. He was running with it. The throw was a six, six. Anything above that was giant. Holy cow. Yo. That was a big fish. I don't know what it was, but it was big. That was a big fish. You didn't even shake him. I don't think that was a mud fish. I really don't. I really don't. Mud fish, they pull hard. Yeah, afraid, look. It's afraid. That ain't a mud fish. That was a bass. That was a big one, dude. That was a very big That's fish. That's a great learning lesson right there. And this is something I want everybody to know at all times. You need to always check your line, especially when throwing something like this, you're pitching in all those trees. And you know, when you're going through all that stuff, even when you get hung up, the smallest little things, even when you're catching fish for a while, you always want to check your line and retie. And that is a little mistake that I just made and I broke off a big fish right there. So we're going to retie right now and get back in there, catch a big one. Big bass? Yeah. A striper. I mean that so? How the heck you catch a striper in here? That's a good one. Holy cow. That's big bass energy just striped it bass. <laughs> Dude, that's a good one though. Good striper. That's a fatty. I can't believe you caught him back here. That is On insane. A crawl. On a crawl. I've never seen that before. That's a beautiful striper though. That's seriously a good one. Oh yeah. How about you thought you had a donk, didn't you? I, had a donk. He was, I was like, yes, sir. We're about probably three miles back, guys, and I just can't believe you caught a striper back here. That's insane. All right. Was it on the bottom? Yeah. Or are you reeling it in? On the bottom. What? That's wild.